Hi, Bonnie. This is Bonnie from Toronto. How are you today? Wow, two Bonnies, no waiting. I, I was going to say, two Bonnies are always better than one, don't you think? <laughs> right, right. Well, I don't know if my family would say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that as well, my friend. Listen, congratulations on this. I've been such a huge fan of yours. The first time we ever met, I got to interview you, was for Jumanji. That was a few years ago. Yeah, <laughs> another lifetime ago and our sweet Robin. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, I'll never forget my interview. I was eight and a half months pregnant, and he did a five-minute routine on giving birth. It will. I'll never forget it in my life. He was oh, amazing. And, yeah. Yeah, totally amazing. And so are you. Thank you for this series. It's such a wonderful series for kids. I binged through it. And I got to ask you, Bonnie, what did you see in Amber Brown that you thought, hmm, this is a little bit like me? Why did you want to bring this series to the screen? Actually, I was creating a series at the time based on my own a personal experience of being an aunt to my six siblings, many children. Um, yeah. And I ran into the uh, executive who had the rights to Amber Brown, the book series, and he said, what are you working on? And I told him, and he said, oh, I have these rights to this book series about a little girl and her aunt. Um, so we decided to collaborate, and I was lucky enough that the family of the author, Paula Danzinger's family, was open to me making Amber older, setting her in yeah. present day, and then bringing my personal experience to it. So in creating the show, it really was a creation and a collaboration of taking the circumstance of the book of a young girl accepting, you know, going through a lot of changes in her life, accepting her parents' divorce, and then bringing the wit, wisdom, and love of my parents that they instilled in me to life through the characters in the series. So, you know, yeah. hopefully it's for everybody. I don't, I never think of it as a kid's show because I think sometimes people think kid's shows are um, written less or, uh, and just the way we filmed it, you know, it's not a box of crayons. It's a, it's cinematically filmed. You know, as a director, yes. I really wanted to have that feeling of a little movie every week. And, you know, Amber's smart and she's heartfelt and she's talking to kids at the top of her intelligence. And for the parents, you know, they can relate to them the parents' feelings of guilt and anxiety. Am I doing enough? Mm -hmm. Am I doing it wrong? Am I, am I too disciplined? Am I not enough disciplined? It's, uh, it's a real dilemma, and hopefully there's not only pathos in that, but a lot of humor as well. I'm trying to figure oh, it out. Oh, 100%. Well, I was going to, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Bonnie, because um, you do bring a lot of humor to it. Yes, there's some serious issues in that, but given your comedic background, that had to have been so refreshing for you to be able to write it like this and make it so relatable to families and kids. Yes, and you know, I, I, you know, my comedy always has come from the truth, and you know, it's not like a an approach where I just want to be funny. It's like I want to be authentic and a yeah. access the thing that's familiar for all of us, like you and I, you know, relating. It's like, oh, you know, you laugh because somebody gets it, because they understand. And, you know, I always think when I was growing up as a teenager, my mother used to say, I love you all the time, but I don't always like you. And that's what happens, <laughs> you know. That's what happens. And I wanted to really bring that to life. You know, I'm a former oncology nurse. I, um, yes. uh, I feel like there's just such cherished, precious relationships in life, especially with our families. And I love exploring that and finding so much value in it and then the humor in it so that people at home, maybe young kids can get a strong sense of self and moms can feel a little relief relating to the character. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you found yourself this Carson Rose. My God, what a dynamo. She is, I just like, oh my God, she's so adorable. I, what was it in her, you know, that you saw? Well, you can see it, can't you? I mean, my mom and I were, yeah. we were watching all the kids come in over Zoom and my mom and I were roommates at the time, you know, and we were seeing all the kids because of the pandemic via Zoom. And Carson came on the screen and I was talking to her. I always ask the kids what they feel about, feel about the material. And she's like, this is how I feel sometimes. And she was connecting to it and she wasn't trained yeah. out of her natural instincts. She was just natural. And yeah. plus just, she she said to me, you know, I, I don't see a lot of people like me on TV when I was growing up. And that just struck a chord with me as well. So, uh, you know, the heart and soul of Amber Brown was all that mattered to me. I didn't put any physical description in the character when I put it out, not not high, short or tall or skinny or fat or yeah. ethnicity or race. It was just the personality of the little girl was most important to me. And then that just had a domino effect and, you know, added the diversity to our show. and. Um, but it's not something that it's discussed like it's an issue. It just is, and it's beautiful. 
Yeah, it really, really is. I, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, it, obviously, look, you did so many great things on camera for so many years, and then you chose to do the behind the scenes um, uh, route, and, and you do such an incredible job at that, at writing and directing and everything. What ultimately do you love more? Like, I guess the behind the scenes thing, I suppose, because you're such a great storyteller, Bob. Oh, thanks. That's such a nice compliment. I, I just have so much respect for storytelling, but I think of it as one job, whether I'm acting or writing or directing. I'm part of a story being told. And, you know, storytelling is so powerful. I remember seeing my own parents when I was younger, watching TV and laughing at the Andy Griffith show or it's stuff that was in reruns yes. when I was a kid. It was in reruns, but it was timeless. Yes. Yeah. And I was, I'm just hoping to achieve something that's timeless and accessible and can strike a chord in people where they can just for a moment see themselves and find some humor and maybe some comfort. It's, 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 a, yeah. real, it's a real honor to be able to have the opportunity to do so. Okay, but are we gonna see you on screen? Come on, I gotta, I gotta know. Well, we'll see. Anytime soon? I don't know. <laughs> I'll, maybe somebody out there will write something great for me that I can come and bring their story to life while I'm writing these. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Well, this is just, this is fantastic. You've done another fantastic job, and I, I, I'm sorry to hear that your mother had passed away recently, but I know she's looking down and smiling big time watching this show from above and, and very, very proud of her daughter. So thank you so much, Bonnie, for your time. I always appreciate it, and uh, best of luck with everything. Thanks. Thanks so much for your kindness. I appreciate it.